Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And because of Christ's love, I too walk in love, as Christ also has loved me and has given himself for me. Amen. Our scripture reading will be will we cover from Judges chapter 6. Um, no, it's Judges chapter 13. Sorry. Judges that chapter 13. Uh, verse 5, and then Judges chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. Again, in Judges chapter 13, verse 5, and then Judges chapter 14, verse 1 through 4. It's on the screen as well. Let's read it. It says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. And Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen the woman of Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thy goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? He says, I have, and, and Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let us have a word. For prayer. Now, we're Heavenly Father, thank you, Father God, for again blessing us, Lord. Now, as me, Father, standing in the need of prayer, Lord. I pray, Lord, that I decrease and that you increase in me, Father God, that your word come out, Father, and touch someone's heart, Father, that someone may ask what must they do to be saved, Lord. Or that your word just give us strength and strengthen us in our areas of weakness, Father God, and help us to realize that uh, we all fall, Father God, but it's all right, Father, that we're able to get back up, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. 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 So this morning, um, I'd like to speak to you from the title of uh, Your Weaknesses, But God's Purpose. Again, Your Weaknesses, But God's Purpose. Now, some of you may be familiar with Samson and the strength of uh, the man in the book. And you probably heard of uh, Samson and Delilah. Um, so I'll be dealing with that story. And again, for the title. Your weaknesses, but God's purpose. A couple of points I'll be dealing with about your weaknesses is that your weakness begins the problem. Your weakness will always give you away. And weaknesses can blind you and kill you. Your weaknesses will begin the problem. Um, your weaknesses will always give you away. And weaknesses can blind and kill you. But before I get into breaking down any points, let me give you a little background of what is taking place in this story. You know, um, Samson, in, 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 in our pretense, we had the children of Israel, the Bible said, that had, that had done evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord had delivered them over into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. And now God is setting up to have the children of Israel delivered from the Philistines through a man named Samson. You know, remember last time I approached, we were dealing with Gideon. Uh, that was in Judges in the same problem. They had committed evil on the side of the Lord. He turned them over to be in bondage until he called the judges to bring them out. Well, here we are again. He's telling that he's going to use Samson to begin to bring forth the people. The Bible tells us that there was an angel of the Lord that appeared to a woman that was unable to have kids. And the angel told her that she will bear a son and instructed her not to drink wine nor strong drink. And that this child, when he's born, you should not uh, uh, cut his hair, don't bring no razor to his head, for he shall be a Nazarite unto God. Yeah, yeah. And, and she, he said unto God, from the womb all the way till death, he shall be a Nazarite. And he's going to help uh, begin the delivery of the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines. Now, in case you didn't know, a Nazarite is a person who took a vow separate from worldly things and to consecrate himself to God. It did not mean that they isolated themselves from the world, but they was dedicated to the vow of what they put forth towards God. 
And then Nazarite would put forth this vow and say, I'm doing this for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, all the way up to the year. But it wasn't so with Samson. The Bible says that he was going to be a Nazarite all the way until the day that he dies. You see, once a person decided to make himself holy to the Lord, he then agreed to abstain from wine and, and even grapes and uh, uh, grape juice and even raisins. He was abstaining himself from that because he was a Nazarite. He committed himself to stay away from wine. And another thing about a Nazarite is he refused to touch or go near a dead body because it would make him ceremonial unclean. And also while under the vow, a person refused to cut his hair or even shave, for his long hair was a, a, a sign, a visual sign to show that he was a Nazarite, right? It was a visual sign, so when you seen that long hair and he never put a razor to his head, you would probably know that, that he was consecrated to the Lord. Just as us today, we get baptized and we show the church what, that we are a child of God through baptism. You can be saved and sit in your chair right now, but when we have the ceremony, we uh, uh, invite your family out and we in the church and we uh, publicly put you in the water and dip you under and it's symbolizing and showing that you gave your life to Christ. Yeah, yeah. So him keeping his hair and him doing these vows was showing that he was a Nazarite. Now, if a person accidentally broke this Nazarite vow, he had to uh, uh, shave his head and he had to go and take two turtle doves or two pigeons and offer an offering unto the Lord. Because he had broken this vow. And once he does that, once he shaved his head, he would get a brand new start. He would start over because he had messed up. He had broken the vow of what she had uh, uh, vowed to the Lord. It's no different than us with today, but we don't have to take a turtle dove, or we don't have to take a pigeon. All we have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. I repent. I messed up. We don't have to go out and shave our hair anymore. We don't, as a Nazarite did. Once we break a, 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 a commandment that God had called us out, once we sin under God, all we have to do is repent and turn from the way that on which we was going. Well, in our text today, we have Samson, who did not take a 30-day vow. He didn't take a 100-day vow, but he took a vow unto death. You know, Samson was known in the Bible as the strongest man to live from a physical standpoint, but he wasn't so strong in his choices. He wasn't so wise. Samson, like many of us, had a weakness. And just as with many of us, Samson's weakness is about to take his life on all kinds of turns and twists. <laughs> you see how Samson had a weakness for pagan women. Those women that was not of the same faith that worshiped other gods. Those women that were worldly, that had worldly ways. His weaknesses wasn't with Christian women, but worldly women. And it wasn't, and it was the weakness that of uh, uh, pagan women that led him toward life of destruction. It was the beginning of Samson's problem, which takes me to my first point. It says, is that one weakness that can have so many attachments as a result. Just one thing after another, which was that Samson had told his parents that he seen a woman of a Timnite, this Philistine woman. Now his parents had told him, don't go down there and touch the Philistine woman. What's wrong with the women up here? Won't you stay with your brother and women? But Samson wanted what he wanted. So Samson made a way to go on down there anyhow. And on his way down there to, to, to go and approach this woman, Samson ran across something. Samson ran across a, 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 a lion and, 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 a, and a lion that was in his way. And Samson, being strong as he was, Samson had to, had to uh, kill the lion. He killed the lion with his bare hands. That's saying that God, when God have a purpose for you, nothing will be able to come against you to stop you from that purpose. Samson had a purpose. His, even though it was his weakness, but it was God's purpose. So he went down there and he had to kill this lion. And when he went killed the lion, he, he, he pursued on and found this woman of the uncircumcised Philistines. But Samson, again, wanted what he wanted. He said she was pleasant to his eyes, so he had to make sure he get there. Doesn't that sound familiar when things are pleasant to your eyes and look good, but it ain't always good for you? Yeah. Eve had thought the, the fruit of the uh, uh, the, the fruit of the a forbidden tree was good for her because she's seen it. She said, oh, it's pleasant to my eyes. She was weak towards that, and the serpent just uh, 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 deceived her until she went and built her that fruit. Then she gave it to her husband. And when he built her the fruit, that's when sin entered in. It all started because it was pleasing to her eyes. We're talking about your weakness, but God's purpose. 
So now in this story, Samson, which was during a time where there was no king in Israel, and every man did that which was right in their own eye, Samson, too, was doing what was right in his own eye. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, but God was getting ready to use Samson's weakness to stir up a conflict with the Philistines, which in the end will lead to the Israelites being defeated. I mean, the Israelites being delivered. Remember, the children of Israel was delivered into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years, and an angel had told Samson's mother that Samson would be the one to begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Well, here it is. Samson's weakness is being uh, uh, used for God's purpose to begin that deliverance. Samson's weakness led him into intermarital uh, uh, marriages. So he took this Philistine woman. Now they're making their way back on up to their house. And when they're making their way back on up to his parents' house, he sees the lion over there dead. He sees uh, uh, some bees with the honey all around. And he goes over there and he uh, uh, takes the honey and began to eat it. But, uh, so right there, he's breaking the vow with that Nazarite vow. Yeah. Remember, the Nazarite vow wasn't supposed to go toward nothing that's dead. Yeah. But because he wanted what he wanted, he got his wife. I'm going back. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. Yeah. He takes this woman and he goes back and he takes the forbidden food that he wasn't supposed to have. Oh. And not only that, he gets back home, but he gives some to his parents. And then when he gives up to his parents, he creates a, he have a feast, a drinking party, and he invite other pagans over. I told you don't mess with that pagan woman. But now you got her and her friends over here. So now these friends come over and now they wondering about his strength. And they start asking his wife about the strength of her husband. And so he gives a riddle and tells them a, a, a riddle that they, uh, if you break this riddle, I, I would go and get you 30, um, 30 clothes, 30, 30 pieces of clothes from, from, from uh, these men or however. He said, I'll go and get you 30 pieces of clothes and bring it back to you. And so these men wanted what they wanted. They, they start bribing his wife. So they start asking his wife. They said, how, where does uh, Samson get his strength from? And she couldn't tell him. So she went to her husband and asked, how do you have this strength? And he wouldn't tell her, but then on the third day, after three days had passed, they could not get the riddle, so they blackmailed Samson's new pagan wife, and they told her to entice her husband and find out this riddle and tell them what it is. So she went to Samson and cried and told him that he didn't love uh, 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 her because he had not told her the answer to the riddle. She started messing with his mind, like, yo, you must don't love me because you won't tell me that I was, was the answer to the riddle. And so Samson ends up telling the woman the answer to the riddle. And so the woman, which is his wife, goes back and tells the man the answer. And so they come to Samson and they tell him the answer. But Samson got to keep his word because he told him, if y'all tell me the answer, I'll go out there and get you them 30 pieces of uh, 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 clothes yeah. and them 30 sheets. And so since they came and told the answer, Samson knew they had cheated and he got the answer from his wife. So he went down to another town and guess what he did? He went and killed some people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He went and killed some people to get them pieces of clothes. I ain't about to go buy them. I'm about to, he went and killed 30 people and brought back 30 sheets and 30 clothes just as he said that he would. This is the result of Samson's weakness, which took his life on a spin and would not be that uh, it would not be his last. His same weakness for the Philistine woman led him into battles and ultimately led him to his death. All over this pagan woman. I wonder if Samson is along in here or is it true with all of us as well? <laughs> Has your weakness led you down some paths in your life? Have your weakness led you down and your life can turn and flipped upside down? You know, you probably didn't stepped out on God because you were weak and you start doing things of the world and now you got baby daddy and baby mama drama because we didn't do it the right way? Have your weakness got a hold to you where you had to try some drugs and then you wrapped up in the drugs and now that's your weakness? Your weakness has got the best of you. Samson's weakness got the best of him. It was the beginning of what God was calling him to do so that he, it, it, it could stir up what's about to happen with the Philistines. So even in Samson's doings with taking vengeance into his own hand, it was the spirit of God that came upon him for that task. God knew what he was doing. Samson believed in, in the eye for an eye and the tooth for a tooth. He said, you do something to me, I'm going to harm you. If you harm mine, I'm going to harm you. And so uh, uh, after Samson had returned from killing the 30 men 
in Ashram, he found out that his father-in-law had given his wife away. <laughs> Hold on, I didn't just did all this for her, and now I go back and I found out that my father-in-law had given my wife away. Samson did not take that well. <laughs> he didn't vow to harm the Philistines, still executing the promise, the, the purpose that God said. Remember in the beginning, God told his mother that you're going to have a child. She could have kids. This child is going to be the one to begin to deliver the children of Israel out of the Philistines. So now he's a grown man. And now this is these times that's happening right now. So all this is uh, uh, happening because it's all part of the divine plan. So Samson uh, uh, found out that his wife is gone and all that and everything, and he gets mad. So he's going to take 300 foxes, and he lit the tail of all these foxes, and he had these foxes run around the vineyards and, and burn down the Philistines' uh, uh, vineyard in Alice. And the Philistines were so angry that they took his wife and her father, and they killed them. They killed both of them. And shortly after, the Philistines went up to capture Samson, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he killed a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. Now, all this started because of his weakness for this Philistine woman, and it didn't even end there. He took this jawbone, and after he killed them, the Bible said that Samson said, am I going to die of thirst out here now? And God opened up the, the jaw the, uh, uh, the jawbone, and water came out, and he was able to drink water. But still, just as many of us, still as the children of Israel, despite all the delivering where God had delivered them from, they still messed up. Then remember last week how Gideon had did what he did with the judges and how uh, uh, 300 had defeated 135,000 uh, uh, Midianites? And this is after this, and still the children of Israel fell under that same evil. They start worshiping idol gods still. And I don't care what it is, when God delivered us from our situation, why do we go back? Well, Paul said it best. He said, why is it that the good that I should do, I do not do? Why is it that the, uh, the, the, the bad that I shouldn't do, that it is that I do? And Paul said, then I realized that it's no more I that do it, but it's the sin that dwells in me. Yeah. The Bible said the true proverb is like a dog returning to his vomit. Mm -hmm. This dog is going to vomit up and he's going to go back and lick it up because that's his nature. A pig, no matter how good you clean this pig, you can give it a nice bath with some soap and everything, have it smelling good. Well, the first thing the pig is going to do is go back to the mud because that's his nature. Yeah. Well, guess what? When we get delivered in things, we still have the sin nature in us. That's what we wear, battle against. We battle in, 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 in the spiritual warfare. Yeah. So that sin nature, the devil plays on your weakness. And he want to pull us back. So the only thing that will keep us is the Holy Spirit that's guiding us. But we got to yield to the spirit that's guiding us. Or we're going to keep yielding back to our nature. So here, Samson, still after God had did all that, he still hadn't got it. Which brings me to my next point. Your weakness will give you away. It will give you up. You see, after Samson killed a thousand Philistine men, Samson thought he could get away by going to a place called Gaza, which was the most distant city of the Philistine from Samson's house. He thought he could run far away and get away, but as long as he had that weakness, there was no hiding for the weakness, the trouble would be him there. No matter where you go. Have you ever seen some people that try to get away and say, I'm just going to move? Or they go to these camps or they go to different states and they feel like, I just need a fresh start. It ain't the, it ain't the, the, the place where you're at, it's you. You go there and say, I need to, I, I need to quit doing this, so I'm going to go over here. But guess what? Oh, sooner or later, you start doing it there. Because it's that weakness. Well, Samson had a weakness for Philistine women, and he thought that he could get far away from the Philistines and everything and go out to a place called Gaza. But watch this. After going to Gaza, he saw another Philistine woman that was a prostitute, and he had to have her. <laughs> Shortly after, it was told that he was there, and the Philistines surrounded the city and waited for him at all, all the eight edges of the gate of the city. But Samson was so strong that he uprooted the city gates and he carried them out. Yeah. Even though they tried to close him in, he uplifted the city gates and prevailed and got away. But his weakness gave him up. Had he not messed with a Philistine woman, they never would have probably found him. But it was his weakness that starts showing up. And I don't know, uh, as I said, I don't know, there is no place you can run from your weakness. I don't care if you go to the other side of the world, your weakness will beat you there. I don't care how good you try to hide your weakness from others. Sooner or later, it's your weakness that will give you away. You be telling everybody, oh, I don't drink no more. 
Sooner or later, you, you start noticing their drinking habits. You start hearing it, and they go, oh, they, you, you can tell when somebody is drinking. You can tell when somebody, oh, I, don't, I don't do drugs no more. But then you go around, and they're trying to hide it from you, but they can't. Why? Because their weakness will show them out. It's ironic, but weaknesses have a lot of strengths to it. <laughs> it's how I, it, it knows how to begin problems and stir up some mess. It knows how to give away your secrets, and it knows how to blind and destroy you. That's why it's one of the enemy's strongest weapons. The weaknesses have some strength to it. Yeah, yeah. Satan used those weaknesses to get you to fall. He's been around way before we have been around. He's been around uh, 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 over thousands of years ago, and he know mankind. He's seen our nature, our habits. So as we're growing and he's trying to get you, he knows what to throw at you because he's seen what you used to do. So I'm going to dress it up like this and set a trap for him. I know that's his weakness. Well, we know that Samson had a weakness. And now the lords of the Philistines found out this weakness and they have decided to use his weakness against him in order to figure out the source of his strength. So knowing Samson has a weakness for this Philistine woman, the lords of the Philistine recruited a Philistine woman by the name of Delilah. And that's where you get Samson and Delilah from. It all came here and, and, and so what happens is uh, they went to Delilah and said, entice Samson and find out where his strength lies so they can afflict him. And for doing so, they offered her 1,100 pieces of silver. This is the line in the Bible. Samson said this is the one that he loved. It's the only time when he said Samson loved one of those. And he, he, used, he, he used the word love. And they took the Lila and enticed her and said, we all will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Not just one of us, but all of us. Because, see, they really wanted Samson for all the, all the uh, had it, had it he was causing up there by killing all the men and all this. So they had to have Samson. Now, normally, uh, 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 for 30 pieces of silver would count for a slave or however. But they offered her 1,100 pieces of silver from each of them so that she can betray him. I don't know how many of them it was, but even if it was two of them, that's 2,200 pieces of silver to give her. If it was uh, 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 three of them, that's 3,300 pieces of silver to give her. I don't know how many it was, but she saw. She said, okay. But we know Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. Here it is. She was betraying her husband for 1,100 pieces of silver times however many other men who was offering it. So instantly she went back and asked Samson, where does your strength lie? And just as uh, uh, with his first wife, he didn't tell her right away. Remember, with his first wife, he said that, I didn't even tell my parents the answer to the riddle. Why should I tell you? <laughs> but after she had, uh, uh, after she said he must not love her and was crying daily, he ended up telling her the answer. Well, the same thing is about to happen here. Delilah uh, 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 was saying the same thing. He, uh, uh, at first, when he told Delilah the answer, he gave her the wrong answer. The Bible says at first, uh, he said, if you tie up uh, uh, myself with some fresh uh, ball strings, both strings, he would become weak as other man. And so she went out and she done this. And they tied him up. And when the Philistines came against him, he broke them and came and he defeated the Philistines. And then she went back to him and said, I thought that you told me that that was the answer to your strength. And then he said, okay, this is the answer. He said, then he told her, if I bind him with new ropes, he would be weak as other man, but it was not so. That didn't work either. Then, he said, tie my hair in seven locks, and he would be weak as other man. So she went and she tied his hair in seven locks. And then she approached him and said, the Philistines was coming, they're here. And, and they come in and everything, and Samson rose up, and he defeated them too. So she like, I thought that was your weakness. But you keep telling me these lies, I thought that was your weakness. Now, you would think Samson should have known she was trying to set him up after all these attempts, but he was blinded by his weakness. He loved Delilah. He loved the Philistine woman and this, this Philistine woman. And so you would think that he would catch on. See, Samson, even though he was the strongest, he wasn't the wisest. He didn't use no wisdom. <laughs> We all know some people right now that are blinded by their weaknesses. You can look at some things and you and, and they trying to get somewhere. You can see clear as day. All they got to do is this. All they got to do is that. But they can't seem to get out of their own way. Or you can see when somebody using them and, mis and, 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 
mistreated them and they just can't see it because they're in it. They can't get out of their own way from the outside looking in. You can, you can see exactly where the person needs to go, but it's something when you up too close for it. Sometimes if you hold something too close, you can't see it. If you put it right in your face, it's too close. Sometimes you got to step back and look at it. For us as barbers, we be fading up close and we cut hair in. Sometimes you can't see the fade line that's in there, but when you step back and you look at it, you say, okay, I got a hit right there because I can see the line. But when you're too close, you can't see it. Samson was in the midst. He couldn't see the problem. He couldn't see it. And this woman kept coming to him saying, tell me your weakness. He was too close on it. So when she hit him with, uh, uh, you must don't love me and everything, he, 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 he said, okay, let me tell you my weakness. Look, what, what, what it is that, that make me sick? What it is that make me weak? Samson, once again, was blinded, and he told Delilah that if you cut my hair, I never had my hair cut before. He told her that his strength come from his long hair, and if it's cut, he will come, become weak as other men. And just like that before, he was betrayed by a woman. He was betrayed by his weakness. But this time it was causing his life. Delilah went out and she told the lords of the Philistine, okay, I got the answer. All we got to do is cut his hair. He's going to be weak <laughs> as other men. And so they come in and hit their ears again. And now notice cutting his hair was the only part of the Nazarite vial he had not broken until now. And it wasn't until then that he lost his strength. And that's how the enemy works. He will keep coming at you, coming at you, coming at you until you take everything from you, break you down piece by piece. And that last piece you holding on to, he'll come at you and come at you and break that down too. Well, Samson was at his last piece that he never, that he, this the only thing that he didn't do in this time was cut his hair. So he said, my strength come from my hair. And so she goes and they cut off his hair. And when they cut off his hair, the Philistines came in. And when they came in, they grabbed a hold of him and they uh, uh, blinded him and tied him up and they took him down to their uh, to their place. They took him down to the house uh, of the Philistines and they had him captured there. Yeah. Now he couldn't break. Why? Because he was weak. He had gave up his only source of strength. Yeah. So at the time the Philistines were rejoicing. They called Samson old <laughs> and they called him out to come and entertain them and while he was out there he he grabbed a hold to these pillars. He asked, let me hold on to these pillars that's holding the house together. Uh -huh. But see, at this time, too, as they shaved him, his hair started to grow back. Yeah. And he was weak. And they tied him up. And he said, just hold, let me hold on to these pillars. Yeah. And as he's, as he's holding on right there, guess what? He, he, he couldn't see. He was blind before they punched his eyes, uh, put, put his eyes out of her, uh, engaged his eyes. And so he bowed his head down and he prayed to God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, Samson only called on God when he was in trouble. All right. mm -hmm. When indeed Samson sought the Lord's deliverance. But as soon as the crisis was over, he returned to his old ways. Uh -huh. Remember the jawbone? He needed water. He called on the Lord. But as soon as that was over, he went back to his old ways. So now you're at the point. Now you're really weak. And now the enemy has got you. Lord, where are you? Where are my strength? So he bowed down. He said, Lord, just this one more time, give me the strength yeah, yeah. to defeat the Philistine. Give me the strength mm -hmm. to get him out of this. Mm -hmm. And he bowed his head, and the Bible says that he got his strength back. And he yeah. tore down the whole house, and everything fell down. And the Bible says he killed more Philistines than he killed his whole life just by that one encounter. So truly, his strength didn't come from his hair. His strength came from the Lord. It didn't come from nothing else. It came from the Lord. And all this time he was saying, it's my hair. It's this. It came from the Lord. But God had to break him down for him to realize that your true strength come from the Lord. So all I'm trying to say is whatever we go going through in life, your true strength come from the Lord. It ain't in, uh, in, in no temporary happiness. It's about the permanent happiness that Jesus Christ gives us because he gives us the strength. We need some strength in order to deal with some of these trials and tribulations we deal with. If it had not been the Lord, I don't know how I would have made it through this. If it had not been through the for the Lord, I don't know how I would have made it through that. It wasn't no drugs that helped me make it through that. It wasn't no alcohol that helped me make it through that. It wasn't uh, uh, no women or no men that helped me make it through that. It's the strength of the Lord that would help me make it through. 
Samson been through all that, all what he went through for this Philistine woman, and uh, it was three or four of them, and every time he encountered these problems, he had to fight. And he gave his answer to the one he loved. And he became weak, and he realized that my strength really comes from the Lord. So when he broke down that house, everybody died, including himself. And, it, and it, that was the fulfillment of what God had told his mother in the beginning, that your son will be the one to begin to deliver Israelites from the hands of the Philistines. Samson's weakness, but it was God's purpose. He fulfilled his destiny. He began to deliver Israel out of their hands. And don't you know that's don't you know this wasn't the first time nor the last time someone weakness used to carry out that purpose? Because when Jesus was here, what he chose? Twelve disciples. And he said, one of them is a devil. And I said it a little earlier, Judas was the one that betrayed Jesus. But Judas had a weakness for money. And when they offered Judas them 30 pieces of silver to betray the Lord, Judah took the 30 pieces of silver and he said, the one I kiss is the one that called himself the Christ. And so Judas went down there and he kissed Jesus. And they took Jesus and they took him in bondage. And we know the story. They beat him and mocked him and put thorns on his head. But all this was part of God's plan. For this is what Jesus came to do. But it was somebody's weakness that was used in order to carry out the purpose. Now, I don't know anybody's weakness in here, but I know we all have weaknesses. And one day when you overcome those weaknesses, God will use you to help deliver somebody else that's going through those weaknesses. So your weakness is for a purpose. You may have been an alcoholic, you may have been on drugs, you may have been a womanizer or however, but once you get delivered from it and somebody else going through it, you know how to deal with them. And they know that you're telling the truth because you can feel when somebody lived that life by how they're talking. You know that they know what they're talking about, so they are able to, God can use you to help deliver somebody else that's going through what you've been through. Your weakness, but it's God's purpose. Judas Betray Jesus for Jesus' purpose of coming to die for our sins. And because Christ died, we have eternal life. And because Christ died for everyone that accepts Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're making a vow to God that I'm going to be Christ-like. I ain't talking about just Christ-like one day. I ain't talking about Christ-like two days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 100 days. No. Being Christ-like is a lifestyle. Being a Christian is a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike the Nazarite vow, they had them 30 days, 60 days, 90 No, it's a lifestyle. Just as Nazareth, just as Samson had the, until death. Until we leave this place, we ought to be that light in this dark world. Yeah. Your weakness, but God's purpose. Yeah. The door of the church is open. I like to extend the privilege of the church. And if anyone here today have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment now. You know, I wouldn't leave this place without making sure that I'm right. Especially as, as, as much as uh, death is around us and as much as what's going on, that could have been uh, uh, fatal for my mother yesterday with the accident. We just don't know the place, the time, or what. But as I said before, the appointment is going to be an appointment that you will not miss. You know, you can miss your doctor's appointment and all that, but your appointment of death is one that we is not going to miss and one that we're going to be right on time. It's only two places we go have when we leave this place, either heaven or hell, and depending on what way, what, if you choose Christ or not, will determine your final destination. Is there one today that has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? This is the time now the door to church is open. And Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. Paul said, For when I am weak, then I am strong. The door of the church is open. Is there one looking to be baptized? Is there one that has not given your life to Christ? Is there one that does not have a church home and looking for a church home? This is the time now. The door of the church is open. Maybe you're coming for prayer and coming to be restored. 
The door of the church is open. Is there one? No. Don't get tied up and think you all messed up because I didn't fail, I didn't mess up. No, it don't work like that. You come to church, you come to Christ, and that will start. See, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us daily. We all mess up. We all go through things. We all get convicted. The conviction is perfect. When we have any problem and we get convicted, we ought to be thankful to God because he's convicting us. He's cleaning us up. God said, I, will, I am the refiner of gold and silver. I will purge you. If you don't know nothing about the refiner of silver, he will put that silver in the hottest point of the fire. And he keep his eye on that silver until he's able to see his reflection in that silver. So what God is saying is I'm going to keep you in the fire until I'm able to see my image in you. Once I'm able to see my image in you, I'll pull you up. But guess what? You're going to get dirty again. And we go through the process over and over again. It's a daily process. He said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. Is there one? The door of the church is open. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto me, but no man come unto the Father, but by me. Is there another? Is there one that have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Is there one looking to be baptized? Maybe you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Are you ready to show the world, show a demonstration that I'm ready. I done gave my life to Christ. Maybe that's you. The door of the church is open. Your weakness for God's purpose. Is there one? 